everybody else out there. You're the chosen one of God. And you are destined, destined for eternity with him. And not like the rest of the world. Because what we're going to read about now and what we're going to walk into is what's going to happen to the rest of the world. And every once in a while I'll turn on the news and you catch the pictures of what's going on in in Syria or Iraq or wherever. And, and some of those places Esther and I have visited, in, especially in Iraq where you had a lot of students came to our school in, in Beirut. And we it came from Christian communities in Iraq. And we hear the words Karkuk or Musul. And we think of the students that used to sit in our classroom. And, and that's where they came from. Are they alive? I don't know. I don't know. But I know this much. I know this much. Those that die like that live eternally. Hallelujah. They are just as much chosen for God's kingdom as you and I are. And we don't go through the hell they're going through, but we go through our own hell. And the devil does everything he can to get you to stumble, fall, make mistakes, err, sin, do whatever, because he wants company in hell. God is saying, no, you're my chosen generation. You're mine. I have chosen you. And while we're walking on earth, as we go through these next chapters, he wants to show us how all through our lifetime we can be more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. More than a conqueror. Because all the way through this, you're going to discover the fact that there's conflict all the time. But God is saying to you, you know, you're higher than that. Yes, you're indeed. You're greater than that. You're yes. more than a conqueror. Yes. You're my chosen generation. Thank you're you, You're my Jesus. royal priesthood. You're not like anybody else. And I love that. Hallelujah. I love that. Because God has chosen us for that purpose. And so what he really wants us to do while we're here on earth is worship. To worship him. How do you worship him? Just worship him. You can worship him while you're washing dishes. You can worship him while you're doing anything else. You can do all kinds of things to worship him. And all he wants is for you to worship him. Get off, get past everything else that's going on in this world. Yes. Get your focus on him and worship him. Because it's only there that you'll find peace. It's only there that in that presence and in that act of worship that you're going to discover the peace of God which passes all understanding. Yes, hallelujah. And though the world, our, our world is chaotic, mm. we know that because Jesus came and died for us, we are freed from our sins, and our sins no longer have dominion over us. Thank you, Jesus. And so we will spend it with him. We'll spend eternity with him. But he's given us this so that we can see how every day he's programmed us to win. Every day he wants you to be a winner. Thank you. Every day. Now, in that Chicago Cubs game, the guy that made it was the guy who he hit the home run at the end. And that was the winning run, and, and everybody went crazy. And you would think that he should live forever because he hit a home run that won the World Series. <laughs> Jesus hit the home run at the, at the cross. Amen. He Hallelujah. Won the World Series. Amen. Amen. He yes. Woo. He won over the works of hell. All of that he's defeated. Thank you. And there's nothing that can defeat you if you'll get caught up in the environment of worship. If you'll worship him, you'll discover, you will discover there, hallelujah, that you are destined, destined for eternity with him. Hallelujah. And you got to think about that. Not just once in a while, but keep that thought sort of running in your head. I am. Uh, found a new new radio station in my car. Probably not new. But it's uh, it's contemporary Christian.
and there's no advertising, there's no announcing, there's no nothing. It's, it's just contemporary Christian music. Now, it's not the kind that I listen to all the time or I've ever listened to continuously, but it's interesting because it tells me that I can make it in the morning. <laughs> Some of these guys who wrote these contemporary songs are a lot more real where I am than some of these wonderful old songs that we sing. Because sometimes we just need to know that where I am, I win. Amen. It may not look like it, I may not feel like it, but I'm a winner. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus wants that's us to it. get through to us. He wants to get through to us. And so as we take this adventure into the Revelation, I want you to look at it first of all, as a disclosure of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're going to see something about Jesus all the way through this book. Okay? Its purpose is there because the last John saw him, <clears throat> pardon me, was to say goodbye as he was ascended into heaven. But now John is writing because he wants us to know Jesus, to know him. Not just what you read in, in the Gospels, but to know Jesus. And so as, and I trust you'll be reading Revelation 2, 3, and 4 for next Sunday. I don't know that I'll get that far, but I'm planning on it. But I, I want, the, because I really, I really want you to get this into your spirit. I really want you to see yourself as a victorious person. Hallelujah. That God has ordained that you're the winner. Not a loser. Hallelujah. Not a loser. Whatever else is going on in our world, the church is not a loser. Right. It's not a loser. You know, next Sunday we'll be going over some addendum notes and stuff. And if we listen to what the Supreme Court in Washington says, it says that the church will stop existing in America. Okay? But if you listen to that, you're going to think those guys know more than God. God could care less whether we meet in a building like this on Sunday, or we meet in a house, or we meet in an open field, Amen. or we meet to worship Him. As long as we meet. <laughs> and that's something that the devil can't take away from us, all right? Hallelujah. He, he might take away the rights of a building, or whatever, that, that's beside the point. That's beside the point. He can't take the passion of worship away from us. Thank you, Jesus. Want, right? Hallelujah. And whatever the circumstances, you know, when, 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 I, when Sandy and I were starting to work on this addendum and we were contacting the, the legal departments and so on and reading all these things, you know, you could get very, very disappointed and say, I quit. Hmm. Instead... You get it up and say, oh, no, devil, you lost. We win. Amen. What's going on in Washington? That's only five men or five people who think they're Ooh, harder than God. Hallelujah. They can anything they want hallelujah. Say, but God is in charge. Right. Not yes. those five people. That's right. And we form our opinions on God. And that's what I want you to see as we walk through the revelation here. God, the, the, the whole purpose of that is so you get a better a picture of who Jesus really is and what he came to do for you and yes. what he came to do yes. for our world and, and though the, the weapon of the warfare and the, nothing the devil can come up with can stop the church thank you Jesus hallelujah it can't stop the church There'll thank you for our high priest hallelujah when the trumpet of God sounds and the dead in Christ rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the air. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. You know, Esther's sister-in-law went to be with Jesus this past week. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's been a part of the family 75 years, right? I, I don't remember. <laughs> yes. They've been married 75 years. <laughs> but you know, we were th we were talking with the family, and and uh, last night I was talking with her husband, Esther's brother, and he's he's is celebrating with the fact that she's with Jesus now. Hallelujah. And one of these days, she's coming, and we're all going to be with Jesus. That's right. And that's what he's looking forward to. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. And that's what John is going to draw your attention to as you read through the book of the Revelation. 
He wants you to see Jesus, who is more than a conqueror. Yes. He wants you to see Jesus, the Son of God. Yes. And then see it that we are made into his likeness. Hallelujah. That's what you're going to discover in this book. And so, and you know, let me, let me just say this. Uh, Antoine, you know, he puts this up on, 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 on uh, Facebook. Facebook. What is it? Facebook. Okay. Yep. <laughs> anyway, the other day I got a, 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 I got a message on mine. This person said, I watched what was put on, on Facebook last week. And he was talking about how it affected him. And I thought, praise God. Somebody out there was so affected by an introduction to the, <clears throat> the chapters 21 and 22, if you'll remember. Amen, that's Good right. Sunday. Yes. And, 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 and I just believe that God is saying to us, I've got an adventure for you. Adventure. As you walk through this, I want you to see things